Hello, hockey fans. The Minnesota Hockey Connection is on the air. And we're at Pack TV Studios in Duluth. And it's Monday, April 4th, 2022. And now it's the college Frozen Four. And there's some two Minnesota teams left, a Michigan team. And the other team is Denver out west in Colorado. So no Eastern teams in the Frozen Four is in Boston. So that's kind of weird. <laughs> no Eastern teams there. But uh, boy, this is going to be a big tournament out there because you got four great teams that are playing. And basically, these four teams deserve to be there the way they've been playing at the end of the year. And I was out in Colorado, and it's amazing that Denver filled up. They played the Loveland Regional out there. It's about 50 miles above Denver, and they filled the stands there, and that was probably the only regional they filled the stands, but Denver came through with a lot of fans, and it was a great tournament, and uh, the Bulldogs, we're just a little short of going back to the Frozen Four for the fifth straight time. But, hey, hats off for a great season to the Bulldogs. And it all started on Thursday, March 24th, where UMD played Michigan Tech. And let me tell you, Michigan Tech is a very good team. And plus, they, the weirdest thing about that game with UMD was that their best player, a top 10 finalist for the Hobie Baker, a Minnesota boy, played for a small school, Delano, out on the west side of the Twin Cities. And the family members have played at Michigan Tech besides him. But Brian Helgen, Helenen got a major penalty and was pushed out of the game, game misconduct. And so, that hurt Michigan Tech, and that happened in the first period. And you know, our goalies, UMD goalies, they they just play. I mean, we've had some great goalies over the years lately, and they did it again. Fanti did a shutout, and that was his third shutout in a row in the NCHC Frozen Faceoff. He had two shutouts, so he was playing great. Then they come to Denver, play Denver on Saturday afternoon. And this time Denver was ready. Uh, a week ago, well, it would be about, yeah, one week before that, Minnesota Duluth beat Denver 2 nothing, And Denver didn't have anything. UMD tied up the, the neutral zone and and kept them on the perimeter, and they hardly ever got to the net, and UMD played a great game. But like all season long, the NCHC conference, no team sweeps a team, and playing that second game now out in Denver for the right to go to the Frozen Four, Denver did the same to UMD. They had nothing the first two periods. They started coming around the third period, but it was a little too late after it was still 1-1, and I, I couldn't believe it was still 1-1 because Denver was really out playing them the, the full game. And then uh, Denver got a fluke goal. The puck bounced off the backboard behind the net, and I tell you, Denver found a way to win, and they're going to the Frozen Four, and they're playing the number one team in the nation, Michigan, on this Thursday. April 7th at, it'll be three, let's see, I think it's 3.30 Central Time. So, big game for Denver and Michigan. But bigger news is that the two Minnesota teams are playing each other Thursday night out in Boston. And I tell you, you got one team that ties up that neutral zone and the other other team that has all 15 draft picks for the pros that are very offensive and can score a lot of goals so we're going to see if defense beats offense or offense beats defense in this game 
And the only problem I have with this game on set on Thursday night, it's going to be 8.30 Eastern time, 7.30, is that ESPN changed to what channel it's going to go on. It was going to be on ESPN2, but now they're going to put it on ESPNU. And a lot of people are not happy with that because a lot of people that have cable or other streaming devices don't get ESPNU. So they have to go to a, a bar or a sports bar to watch the game. So that's not, uh, I don't understand ESPN doing this because the Frozen Four is only one time a year and they're going to put a baseball game on to start the season. So, not too happy about that. But how do these teams get there? So we'll start with Michigan. Michigan um, played a, you know, this American international team in the Atlantic Co Conference. It's the third year in a row that they've gotten to uh, the regionals. And they gave Michigan a little harder time than they thought. And the final score was 5-3. And then Michigan had all kinds of offense against Quinnipiac. They beat them seven to four. So Michigan, um, out in Allentown region, beat uh, Quinnipiac to get to the Frozen Four, and they'll be playing Denver. Denver beat UMass Lowell. It was a tough game. UMass Lowell came back and tied the game, and then Denver scored another goal late in the third period and beat them three two. And like I said, Denver beat Minnesota Duluth two to one. So Denver gets to the Frozen Four. So. Michigan and, and uh, Denver, will, well, it's gonna, they're going to play at 4 p.m. Central Time. So that's 4 o'clock, 4 p.m. Central Time. So now the other two teams. Minnesota, they beat uh, in overtime UMass, who won the, the Frozen Four last year. And they beat them in 4-3 in overtime. And then they had a great game against Western Michigan. So Minnesota beat Western Michigan three to nothing, and they will be in the Frozen Four. And they will go against Minnesota State at 7.30 Thursday night, April 7th, on ESPNU. And Minnesota State, they got there by beating Harvard four to three. Harvard gave them a lot harder time than anyone thought because Minnesota State's a number one seed, and and Harvard, I think, was the 15th seed. So they beat them four to three. And then Notre Dame and Minnesota State had a tough game, not much scoring. You don't, you don't score too many goals against Minnesota State. And that game ended one nothing, Minnesota State. And Minnesota State will now play Minnesota, like I say, the Gophers. Boy, that's a game to watch because I'll tell you they'll be I'll tell you what, there'll be 25 former Minnesota high school players playing in that game on these two teams. So that's great to see the Minnesota connection here. And a lot of these kids uh, are going to be playing pro after their college career too. So that would be a game to watch. If you have a chance to find ESPN U on your TV or go someplace to watch it, That'll be the game, 7.30 on Thursday night. Another thing about, um, no, that's all right. That's for the college. But I'm just looking uh, now at the, being out in Boston. Boston had the Frozen Four. And I was out there in 2004 and 2015. So I love Boston because... Uh, you, you don't need a car once you get into Boston because the transportation, they have the subways, they have the trains, they have the buses and that. It's a great transportation town where you get around and you don't need a car. <laughs> and so I, that's one of the reasons. Plus, there's so much history in Boston and all the great universities. And Plus, on uh, Friday, the day after the first games on Thursday, is the Hobie Baker Award. And they always have it at the Frozen Four the Friday after the first day. And we got three Minnesota connections. We got two former high school players. We got Ben Myers, Delano, that's a 
strong forward for the Minnesota Gophers. We got Bobby Brink, the top scorer for Denver U. And he's from Minnetonka. And he, um, by chance, won the state tournament for Minnetonka back four years ago. So great to see uh, some Minnesota connections. And the other one is um, is um, the goalie uh, for Minnesota State, uh, Dayton McKay. He's, um, he's been a goalie there for four years now and one of the top goalies in the United States in college hockey. And he is the, if Minnesota State wins this uh, Frozen Four, it will be because of him. So three Minnesota connections up for the Hobie Baker. These are the final hat trick players. So we know one of them is going to have a Minnesota connection. So congratulations to all three and good luck at uh, Frozen Four. Now I'm going back to on um, where all these uh, Frozen Fours have been playing. I've been, I've probably been to about 25 of the last 28 Frozen Fours. So I've been all over the country for the, this tournament. And I'm just looking uh, at the future ones. Um, Tampa Bay will have it next year. And then 2024, it's back here in St. Paul. And the funny thing about St. Paul, the last time it's been in St. Paul, the Minnesota Gophers won, and UMD Bulldogs, Minnesota Duluth, has won the last two times. So three Minnesota teams there have won uh, Frozen Four when it's in St. Paul. So maybe that's a good thing to look forward to. And then after St. Paul, it goes to St. Louis, Missouri, which um, they had it uh, back in, uh, let's see, about 2007. Yeah, Michigan State won. And they had Miller as their goalie, who had a great career up in Buffalo as a goalie. And then, uh, then this is a, uh, boy, this is one I'm looking forward to. 2026, the Frozen Four is going to Las Vegas. So, boy, that'd be fun week out in Vegas. <laughs> so, there you go. We got Tampa Bay next year, St. Paul 2024, St. Louis, Missouri 2025, and Las Vegas 2026. So, a lot of good towns there. And you know when they had it in Tampa Bay, uh, let's see, when did they have that there? 2012. Um, they brought it back uh, again in uh, 2000, let's see, 17, 16. And now they're going to have it back next year. At first, they thought they'd try it in a warm climate, and it went over big. People love going down to Florida and being in uh, warm weather, and, and it went over so good. And one thing you got to know, the Frozen Fours are always at a National Hockey League arena. So they're big stadiums. You're going to have 18,000 plus in any one of these stadiums. And... So it's a lot of fun going to these. If you have a chance to go to a Frozen Four, it'd be a great vacation for you to spend a week in one of these towns, that cities that are going to have the Frozen Four in the future. Okay. Let's move on with a little talk. Boy, the Minnesota Wild. They won nine of the last 10 games, and the only game they lost went into overtime, so against uh, Pittsburgh, and they still got a point because it went into overtime. So they got, in the last 10 games, they got 19 out of 20 points. This is making it look pretty good that they'll make the playoffs now. But plus they just went on the road the last two games and beat two very good teams. Uh, Carolina Panther in uh, Washington Capitals. So two big games they won out there. But now they got in their own conference, they have uh, Nashville coming up on uh, on the 5th. And then they got, no, yeah, on the 5th. And then I think it's the 7th or 8th, they got St. Louis. 
8th, St. Louis. And that'll, that'll be uh, on the road. So St. Nashville and St. Louis, two bigger teams. And this is what the problem with uh, the Wild have been over the years is playing these bigger, big players, 220-pound D and 210 forwards. And now because of the trades they made, they got a big D in Middleton, and they got uh, De La Rees is playing forward there that he likes to put the meat into the other players. So we got some players that can probably um, handle some of these bigger teams now. So we'll see. And plus, with Mark Andre Fleury as a goalie, um, they're switching off with Talbot and Fleury. And I'll tell you what, Talbot's playing really good hockey right now, too. Maybe he doesn't want to lose the job at all. So. It's good to see both goalies are playing good, and I'll tell you what, they're, um, the forwards are doing a lot of forechecking, and they're playing real good right now. They're a fun team to watch, and I can see them uh, getting past the first round this year in the playoffs if they make it, and I'm pretty sure they will make it. And just looking after this year, though, I was looking at some of the salaries, and um, they, um, the next uh, three years, they got a, uh, against their salary cap, they got Suter and Parisi for the next three years. Next year is 6300000 and then 23 and 24, they got to go 70, $7,300,000 for both of those players. So they're talking uh, 13, uh, 14, over $14 million that go against them, and that's going to hurt this team on contracts and everything. So I don't know what the Wild are going to do after this year. It can really hurt this team with the long contracts they gave Suter and Parisi. But uh, we'll see. I mean, Billy Guerin, the general manager, is really doing a pretty good job, I think. So, and then going back, on college, after the Bulldogs lost um, to Denver, the very next day, Noah Cates signed with the Philadelphia Flyers, and so happened the Flyers are in town in St. Paul on Monday, after last Monday, and um, and he played in that, his first game right away. He signed with the Flyers, and he was dressed, and he had his first game as a rookie there. So good for Noah Cates. He had a great career. He was a very good captain. And I tell you what, a lot of players looked up to him the way he played the game, 200 feet. I mean, you got to love players that give it all when you play that kind of game. And some things that happened, and um, oh, another player from the Bulldogs, sorry. Um, Ryan Fanti, the goalie, he signed with the uh, Edmonton Oilers. And he'll go to their American Hockey League. Uh, minor league club, but good for him. I mean, he was signed as a free agent. Um, Noah was uh, drafted, so, but uh, good for Ryan. He had a really good career. Some people say, I wish he would have stayed another year, but he's ready to go to the next level. And we still got uh, Stetsko, so we'll see what happens there. I hope his uh, cancer is, stays in remission and that and he can play because he was, when he was healthy, he was a very good goalie too. So I don't think we're going to be missing too much by having Stets go, go back into the nets. And going back uh, this last week at a game, I was at, went to the Pittsburgh uh, um, Penguins game, and defense man Chris Letang, he got his 500th assist. You know, for a defense man to get 500 assists, that is amazing. He almost has, I mean, he's got 141 goals even. And he doesn't even have 1,000 games yet. And that's a lot of points for a defense man. He's had a great career. He's Hall of Fame all the way. And another good story for the Wild, Kirill Caprisa. In 67 games, has 85 points already, 39 goals and 36 assists. And right now, 
He's got the scoring record for the Minnesota Wild all time for one year. And so far he's got 85 points and I can see him. They got 15 more games and I can see him getting 100 points for this season. So, boy, he's so much fun to watch. And you, you, if you go to a wild game now, Minnesota wild game, and you won't believe the jerseys that have been sold with his number 97 on it. And it's, it's great for hockey. So, and like I said, Bill Guerin, the general manager, I think they're very good pickups. Doesn't cost them too much money, but Flurry, Flurry might cost a little bit. But uh, Middleton at the D, D Lars Rees, he um, on the forward, fourth line, he can hit. And then Mark Andre Fleury. And a uh, week before that, they got Tyler Jost um, forward. And I like this kid. He, he can move and he's got skill in that. And I can see him get him on the right line. Right now, mostly he's playing third line, but. I can see him moving up to the top six forward and that. And he's a young player, and I see a great future for him too. And let's go back to the Frozen Four and just give the records of the four teams. Um, Michigan has a record of 31 victories, nine losses, one tie. We'll be going against Denver. 29 victories, nine losses, one tie. So that's a pretty even record for these two teams. Okay, Minnesota, 26 and 12, and Minnesota State, 37, five. If you go by talent, you probably are gonna see Michigan and Minnesota in the finals for the Frozen four in Boston. But if you go by coaching, team play, you gotta love Denver and Minnesota State. They're not gonna score as many goals as the other two teams, but they can stop the other team from scoring. And they both got good goalies, especially Minnesota State. So looking forward to that. So that matchup. So this is one of the better matchups in uh, Frozen Four history I, I see in the last oh good ten years. So I'm looking forward to being out in Boston tomorrow and get it on. <laughs> okay, um, like I said, uh, I think I'm pretty sure that uh, Minnesota Wild are gonna make it to the playoffs, but. Uh, so like I said, they got on the road right now. Here's the games they have left. On April 5th, they got Tuesday, they got Nashville, who is um, in the playoff pitcher. Then they got, on Friday, they got Saint, at St. Louis, big team. They're in the playoff, playoff pitcher right now. Then they got, come back home, they got the Lakers in Edmonton on the 10th and 12th. And there, both those teams are in the playoff pitcher. And then they got Dallas at Dallas on the 14th of April. And Dallas is fighting. They're real close to making the playoffs. So it's gonna be, these are all big games. They're almost like Stanley Cup playoff games right now for a lot of these teams. And then we go back down to St. Louis on the 16th. Then we got San Jose, Montreal, Vancouver, and Seattle. A little easier schedule. And then uh, we go back down on the 24th, Nashville. Then we got three games at home to end the season, the regular season. We got Arizona. And then two big games on the end of the month, 28th of April and 29th of April. We got Calgary and Colorado. Both of those teams are on top of the, their conferences. So it's, um, they got a lot of big games a while. So hopefully they continue what they're doing, the success, and we will see. 
I was just looking at some of the high school players that after the after the high school tournaments and after the regular season, a lot of these kids are playing after in the USHL and in uh, North American Hockey League, and I, I really only saw two players that are really doing really good, and I know these two players will be one might be drafted in the first round even, and the other one might be in the third round. But uh, we got Zam Plant, Hermantown kid. He's been playing good for the Chicago Steel. He's, so far the whole season, before and after, he's got 14.7 goals and seven assists. And But the big big guy, Sam Renzel, Chaska defenseman. Um, 15 games, he's got one goal and five assists. But he's the real deal. And the Pro Scouts really love this kid. And he's probably the number one draft pick in Minnesota high school players. He'll come He'll come out first on the draft. And funny thing about it, um, I think it was uh, Associated Press had our St. Paul Pioneer Press put out their their all-star all team, first, second, third teams. And Renzo wasn't in the first team. And, Talking to pro scouts, they just they almost laugh because this kid, if you're not you don't have this kid as the number one D, you made a big mistake. <laughs> so we'll see how the draft drafts coming up at the end of June there, and I think it's up in Montreal this year. So I think a few Minnesota kids are going to get drafted. So that's nice always to see Minnesota high school players get drafted, and we'll see. So. Hey, I'll be out in Boston. Great hockey. Try to watch it on TV if you can't get out there. And we'll see you at the rink. And thank you, Pack TV, Liz, Vicky, Jim. And we'll see you next week.